higher order aberrations and its clinical implications in human part 1 presented by lakshmi eye institute panvel we will be touching upon the following topics first defining wave front and aberration a wave front represents a loci of points that connects all the rays of light emanating from a point source that have the same phase and optical path length aberration is defined as the difference in optical path length that is opl between the chief ray passing through the pupil center and any ray passing through a point in the pupillary plane the optical path length specifies the number of times a light wave must oscillate in traveling from one point to another point a perfect image will be formed when the converging rays have a spherical wave front and they should focus on one particular point on the retina that is the fovea when this wave front passes through different ocular refractive surfaces aberrations are induced giving a distorted image aberrations in the optical system result in refractive distortions that limit the vision of healthy eyes these are caused by the tear film cornea aqueous lens and vitreous classification of aberrations we classify aberrations into two basic orders lower order and higher order they could be also classified according to the zernike's polynomial it is classified from z0 to z65 but for clinical purposes we take only the first 20 that is the first five orders into consideration vertically down it is placed in radial order denoted by the letter small n while horizontally it is placed according to the azimuthal frequency denoted by small m these are shown as subscript and superscript respectively to the letter z on the lower right corner of each polynomial while the number on the lower left corner denotes the polynomial ordering number calculated by the formula given here warm colors denote peak and cool colors denote valley first and second are the lower order aberrations which are the refractive errors while third order and above are higher order aberrations that is spherical aberration coma trefoil tetrafoil pentafoil and so forth A spherical aberration is one where when rays of light passing a converging lens the rays at the edge of the lens are more convergent than those at the center giving an earlier focus or a positive spherical aberration There are two types of spherical aberration the longitudinal spherical aberration is the distance between the axial intersection of the peripheral rays and the first order focus that is f1 transverse spherical aberration is formed when we extend the image and the height of that specific ray above the axis at f1 the normal corneal spherical aberration is 0.27 microns on the distribution curve we see that 90% of the spherical aberration fall on the positive side while 10% are negative spherical aberration the asphericity can also be calculated by the q value which expresses the curvature of an ellipsoid whether it is prolate or oblate a spherical surface will have a q value of 0 a normal prolate corneal surface with a spherical aberration of +0.27 has a q value of minus 
a zero spherical aberration surface has a q value of minus 0.52 the more the prolate the lower the q value which is seen in keratoconus corneas and the more the oblate the surface the higher the q value which is seen in post radial keratotomy corneas the advantage of having a spherical aberration is that it gives a depth of field by increasing the range of distance of focus instead of focusing on a single point the image is blurred in this range but the visual cortex filters out the aberration giving the perceived image as a sharp one thus having a small positive spherical aberration is ideal than having no aberration as seen in this photograph the image on the left is the one perceived through a surface with small positive spherical aberration where the droplets on the bottleneck and the crown details are seen simultaneously due to range of focus the image on the right is seen through a surface with zero spherical aberration where the bottle is seen as a sharp image with the droplets on the neck but the crown details are blurry due to loss of range of focus The second higher order aberration we will discuss is coma. It is the result of oblique rays getting refracted through the lens. When the object is placed off axis, the rays fall in an oblique direction in the surface of the refracting lens, creating a comet-shaped image as the rays do not focus on one point. Here also, the peripheral rays show greater deviation than the central rays. Thus in this diagram we see that oblique rays near the optical axis show a lesser coma blur and thus lesser aberration as seen in zone 1 the peripheral the rays and away from the optical axis the more is the blur as seen in zone 4 coma is common in patients with decentered corneal graft keratoconus and decentered laser ablation Secondary astigmatism is due to oblique incidence of rays on a spherical lens. It differs from primary astigmatism which is induced by toric surface. Effect of higher order aberration on vision. Higher order aberrations are associated with the following: diplopia, blurring, ghost shadows, halos, star bursts loss of contrast and poor night vision these can be seen in the following slides like halos star bursts and ghost shadows quantification of aberration there are three mathematical methods of quantifying aberrations one by the zernike's polynomial transformations two by the root mean square or rms of the variance of the wave front and three by finding out the strel's ratio which is ratio of peak of the diffraction limited point spread function in the aberration free optical system by the peak of the actual point spread function with aberrations point spread function or psf it refers to the dispersion of rays originating from a luminous point this expresses the effect of the aberrations on the retinal image and consequently on the quality of vision it is inversely proportional to the pupil size that is the more the dilated the higher the psf and strel's ratio and the worse is the image representing aberrations representation of aberrations and psf can be done by 2d and 3d color maps convoluted retinal images and modular transfer function curve or mtf a wave front map is a color coded map with a scale where the cool colors such as blue purple and violet denote a myopic wave front while warm colors 
such as yellow, orange and red denote a hyperopic wavefront. Green indicates no or minimal distortion due to aberrations. This can be denoted as a 2D and a 3D map. The point spread function of PSF is also represented in a 2D or 3D image. The 2D model indicates how the image of a point will appear to a patient, while 3D represents light intensity in the Cartesian space. A convoluted retinal image represents the image of the object on the retina of an eye with a known PSF. This demonstrates the visual effect of a higher order aberration. Modular transfer function or the MTF is the objective equivalent of contrast sensitivity. It is calculated by the ratio of relative image contrast divided by relative object contrast. It is helpful in comparison of post cataract patients. Here we see the internal optics that is lens, cornea and total eye MTF curves of a patient implanted with monofocal IOL against a patient implanted with multifocal IOL. We see that the MTF graph of internal optics in a monofocal is better in higher spatial frequencies as compared to that in a multifocal IOL. Thus, we can infer from the total eye that a monofocal IOL gives a better contrast sensitivity than a multifocal IOL. Similarly, we can also compare the contrast in post-refractive surgery patients. Here we see the MTF graph of a post-LASIK and a post-ICL surgery patient. When we look at the cornea, we see that the MTF graph is lower in a post-LASIK patient as compared to that of a post-ICL implantation patient, giving us the inference that we see in the total eye that the contrast sensitivity is better in the ICL implanted patient as opposed to post-LASIK patient. The following topics, measurement of aberration and clinical application of higher order aberration will be discussed in part 2.